Good afternoon to everybody. So obviously, uh, the where that has happened, it has always also brought the big perspectives and big opportunities to, to our country. For example, because the, the whole landscape in Europe has changed, for example, the energy landscape. So Europe was traditionally very reliant on the Russian fossil fuels, 115 billion cubic meters of gas, 200 million tons of oil per annum, 100 million tons of coal every year supplied to Europe, which was up to 30 to 40 percent of the whole European power sources. Now it is not available anymore and should be replaced with something. Obviously that nobody will dig coal in in the Europe, and it will be replaced with the green resources. But physically, there is not enough land in Europe, not enough onshore wind. So Ukraine has a unique opportunity to become the new powerhouse for, for Europe, green powerhouse, because we have vast land, we have good insulation, we have good onshore wind, and we have good offshore wind just as we gain, regain the territories and the Black Sea. And what is really important that this segment, it provides the opportunities for both for the global majors who play really big, and for the uh, hundreds, thousands of small and medium enterprises in Ukraine to set up the business. So we think this is one of the key segments that will maybe be up to 20 to 30 percent of the whole recovery plan in Ukraine. Green electricity for the Europe and green hydrogen for the Europe based on the location, infrastructure and natural opportunities that we have. I think this is number one and the biggest one. Number two is about the agri that we discussed in the previous panels. So we are the producer of the bulk, but there is the huge extra margin and opportunity of going to the next stage, producing meat, milk, spirits, oils, feedstock, etc. Because even if we go to the private labels, not to the brands, it provides the ec huge extra margin for, for our producers. Number three is what we traditionally had is about the IT sectors, because we have one of the best human capital in, in the world with the very strong engineering potential. And we expect that it will develop even in the pace as fast as it was before. And Ukraine can be one of the locations that can offer the very good competitive advantage in multiple sectors, starting from the green steel, wood processing, chemicals, uh, or any machine building, any other industry where we have human capital and we have a lot of it, where we have natural deposits. And what is really important, we have the natural deposits of the future, of the lithium, of the graphite, of the manganese. That what would be needed for the future future industries. So, but we do understand that the big money to all these segments perhaps will come only after the end of the war. What is important now that we start with the first phase, the research phase, because everybody knows in the business that it takes six to nine months to from the idea, from the land acquisition to the real startup of the project, just the shovel project when you start constructing. So I would say that this is the financial innovation because this is the first time when the MIGA did this type of insurance. So the couple first uh, projects are being selected. So we will go through the process in the pilot way and I think this will be the mass product for any investor that will come in Ukraine until the war is over. Because the key risk now is that your business will be physically destroyed by the Russian missile. First of all, um, let me start with expressing my condolences for the lost lives uh, in this horrific accident. And let me reiterate again that the uh, brave Ukrainians are defending today also my country. We feel safer thanks to the bravery and to the courageous people in Ukraine. And we appreciate it very much. And we will continue to say that Ukraine needs all the support um, it should receive all the support that it needs today because it defends its liberty, but it also uh, fights for the liberty of the entire continent. As you mentioned, we've been trying to help with the refugees, and I am grateful and I'm proud of the Moldovan people because we have managed to help the almost uh, between 600, 650,000 Ukrainian refugees which passed through Moldova. Some of them uh, spent uh, months and some of them are still in Moldova. Some spent weeks and we have managed to provide this help thanks to the Moldovan people. Moldova does not face military aggression again thanks to uh, the resistance um, shown by Ukraine, but we do face uh, the uh, hybrid war um, elements and we are 
trying to uh, keep the country stable because we do we do believe that it is it is important to keep Moldova stable and democratic, both for our own sake but also for Ukraine. And it is extremely important for us for Ukraine to be uh, free, strong, and prosperous and democratic. This is the only way we we can develop. Um, we have been trying to help with the solidarity lanes, mm -hmm. and here I mean the platform that we uh, have created to help the uh, exports of grain from uh, Ukraine through the uh, only port that we have, but also on the route to Romania, and will continue to provide such help. Uh, we have been trying to, to help with the import of inputs, and uh, the, especially the gasoline, the much needed gasoline. Um, we want to participate in common energy projects. We need to diversify, and Ukraine is doing the same. Um, and we are ready to uh, work on um, electricity projects on balancing. We are ready to work on renewable uh, storage and production. And of course, we want to develop our um, infrastructure in common within common projects uh, with Ukraine when it comes to railways, transport, everything that is going to link our two countries with the European Union because this is where we're heading and this is where we want our economies to be, um, uh, to be developing uh, towards. And we have seen 30 years ago how much of a game changer the way towards the European Union can be. Look where Poland stands today. Poland is economically one of the most advanced countries in the European Union now, and I'm not talking about the Baltic seas. Baltic sea states, they're even, even further when it comes in particular to modernization of our industries. So uh, this is a, a road to go, and uh, sometimes when I'm in, in, in big events on, on Ukraine, I, we talk about one very, very important dimension all the time, from morning to night and from night to morning, that's the military dimension. And it's important that we need to bring all, about all the support possible. But on the other hand, the biggest contribution to the resilience of the Ukrainian people comes from the functioning of the economy. Mm -hmm. And we have to do everything in order to keep that economy functioning. And of course, the war has not only produced terrible human losses and victims and disadvantages, but it has also shown this resolve and this determination to take it. And I think, uh, as we have said, uh, we know very well uh, these people, uh, with their courage and determination, they don't only defend Ukrainian interests and uh, lives, they defend our values. So we take that very, very seriously. And the European Investment Bank, the EU Bank, has a clean record on this. We began our cooperation with Ukraine immediately after the beginning of the independence. Mm -hmm. And then in 2014, we took a strategic decision, which was separate from the rest of the Union at that time, because obviously they did not see the seriousness of the situation. We, after the invasion of Crimea, stopped our business with Russia. And that was a huge program, the Partnership for Modernization. Mm -hmm. If you look at the competitiveness of Russian industry, then you get aware how important that program would be. So we had then more funds to go into Central, Eastern, and Southeastern Europe, and uh, we could do more in Ukraine. Well, after the invasion now, nine months ago, uh, we were in the uh, critical situation that we thought, okay, immediate help is necessary, but we cannot look around to find new projects. We need to help with what is needed right now. So within one week, we dispersed close to 700 million euros for immediate help in order to, to get the, the supplies for medical, uh, for schools, for all these things. But this can only be the first step concrete investment project, and we are an investment bank, mm -hmm. a project financier, not a budget financier. So the finance minister, although I'm afraid of him, because he's going to be one of my governors very soon, uh, and the finance ministers of the European Union are the governors of the European Investment Bank, but I cannot help him with his budget, but I can help him with financing good projects. And when we see the Ukraine coming in, we see one big strength coming in. I mean, there is a lot that needs to be caught up. There are lots of be, that it needs to be rebuilt. And we should not talk about these huge amounts of billions and trillions all the time that is more a deterrent than an encouragement. We should talk about the capacity which is there from the natural resources and from the and, and setup of the country and the intelligence of the people, and in particular from the strength of the workforce. Mm -hmm. So I am sure that once 
the door is open, the Ukrainian will make the best of it. In that context, the EIB, I think, should help much more. We have been very active in, in, in projects from, from uh, subway systems to uh, all kinds of things on the, on the energy front. Hospitals in particular, we have rebuilt bridges which the Russians had destroyed and we thought we need to rebuild them now because these bridges are needed in order to keep the economy in that region around that city uh, functioning. So this has, can, can be done, but we need much more support. When we as a triple, bank, triple A bank, which needs to borrow up to 100 billion euros on the capital markets every year in order to finance our projects, we need to, save, to secure that, A, these are good projects. This is why we offer also to Ukraine advisory capacity and technical support. But we also need to be sure that we go, in, go into risky business. The bridge I mentioned might be destroyed in a couple of months again. And the politicians in the European Union should not be afraid of that if you distribute the burden of that potential loss equally around them. So we need, in other words, guarantees. Mm -hmm. People are much too, talking much too much about capital and uh, capital injections. What we need is not capital. I mean, this is sensational for multilateral banks. We do not need capital. We need guarantees. And this is where mm -hmm. all of you can help because put pressure on the politicians to make sure that this bank can continue its work in Ukraine. There was no collective West uh, strong response. So that is why we started our strategy at that time to resist by all means available, uh, starting from non-violent and then uh, to, uh, with the arms in all territory, advocate uh, globally uh, to become EU NATO country and hopefully one day G20 country. So as from 24th of February, uh, Everything changed, the dimension changed, the scale, uh, scale changed, so it became from regional to global. So uh, the leadership of Ukraine, President Zelensky and his team, uh, uh, architecturized the uh, global security and uh, they showed an exemplary resistance uh, when state officials, state apparatus, defense forces, state-owned enterprises, partners and people of Ukraine were aligned in one mission alone, to defend country, to defend European continent, and to defend the global security. So at this stage, of course, uh, our work was focused to the civil corridor that was uh, up to uh, 10 regions temporarily occupied. We uh, withstanded them, uh, kicked them out, and we provided the civil corridor uh, from the temporary occupied territory to civilians, up to 400 to 500,000 civilians have crossed from these temporary occupied territories to Ukrainian corridor, uh, to Ukrainian uh, controlled territories. We uh, made uh, peace talks to show the world that we are capable, civilized European country, and uh, able to negotiate and uh, we've also uh, been able to bring back uh, 1,500 prisoners of war. Uh, we also showed that uh, there is a green initiative and President Zelensky uh, just recently on G19 uh, have uh, shown that there is a peace plan uh, with 10 steps. Uh, so those are our uh, areas where we negotiated. Sure, uh, our organic partners is North America and European Union. Uh, and we've discussed with DFC, USID, IMF, uh, all the investment, major investment banks in Europe and uh, uh, US. Uh, but we also said that we need a growth market and uh, we need a state policy towards the Middle East, North Africa and uh, other uh, areas. So basically we met with a, a public investment fund, uh, ADQ, Mubadala, Adia, Qatar Investment Authority. The focuses were that uh, they are now involved in also uh, providing the assistance on conflict resolution. Uh, secondly, they're involved in uh, humanitarian aid, and we're thinking uh, if they could uh, provide us assistance uh, in uh, advisory on establishing a sovereign fund. In addition, uh, their best practices, uh, they've uh, 
also want to they want to participate in privatization so basically we are analyzing new investments and financial instruments and uh, investment programs with them so uh, at this stage those are the areas that we're covering with them before i answer the question i just want to say how absolutely impressed i am by the resilience um, on a tragic day like today mr shurma mr umarov um, all of the Ukrainian people, everyone who is here in support today. I'm one of the Ukraine House Davos organizers. We had so many prime ministers, presidents, high-level officials. Thank you, President Sandu, for your condolences. It's very important for everyone. And what is um, absolutely important, the first message before I answer the question, is that for those that think that all that's happening in Ukraine is that there are humanitarian, you know, posts and, and, and lineups of folks throughout the entire country um, getting aid. That's not what's happening in Ukraine. The business community is resilient. The business community is strong. Um, they are providing the services nonstop. We see the connectivity. We see the banking sector. We see the trade. We see the logistics infrastructure. And it is that Ukrainian resilience that's powering it on the ground. So the most important message that I want to say is that please get the capital and get the, the resources into the hands of Ukrainians, and they will do all the rest.